Okay, so like 90 Satoshi, you say? So you got 90 Satoshi, that's an amazing deal, right? It's a good price. This is gonna be awesome. It's a stamp onto your money that says buy Bitcoin. This is great. And I get to use, and that's the code base using Lightning for the first time to pay somebody. Exactly. So I'm gonna type in 90 Satoshi. Oh, yeah. Excellent. I'm gonna hit the, hash, the, the uh, hashtag, and then it's gonna generate an invoice for me. There we are. Excellent. And then you just need to scan that. And now I gotta hit send. I'm gonna scan. Oh, Use camera. Oh, allow. I got here yesterday. We scan. And, um, yeah, yeah. We so try to scan. I, I keep the jet lag. Except, you know, this I, this wallet doesn't work very well. My there it is. There we go. There it is. There Let's it see is. Face. Boom. Ninety like, Satoshi's. Hey. Okay. So can you check for errors? Send. Looks like it worked. And then this should refresh then, see? There we go. For the next customer. Oh, cool. Excellent. Your first lightning transaction. My first lightning transaction. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, I'm going to put this to good use. And I want to do it like this. Cool. You can stick it down. Oh, no, I already gave some out to uh, people around me. And they got the lock. So, yeah, yeah. I love the lock. Uh, I'm totally an extrovert, right? Like, like, yeah. Yeah. There you I go. need to be around. Jimmy, so Jimmy already got uh, Jimmy already got one. I've already been handing them out. Nice. That's cool, man. Cheers, Tom. Shmai, welcome. One of the things I'm interested in is uh, making little point of sale devices. Um, I just think that you know people engage with cards through little point of sale devices, specifically made devices. Um, so why wouldn't they engage in in Bitcoin in a similar way? Uh, so this is quite a cool project. This is kind of like. Um, an accumulation of uh, the other projects we've done so far and that's kind of how it came about as well um, I've taken it out and about to a couple of uh, conferences and I've used used this to, to uh, sell things to people uh, on, on lightning which is pretty cool um, so uh, a couple of the projects we've we've already done is the uh, the price checker um, and then that kind of evolved into the sweet machine um, so the point of sale uh, uh, device, it says sleeping at the moment, um, if I press the little reset button there, it'll do a loading and then I've kind of upgraded this device a little bit in the past few days. Once it's connected to the network, I can input my Satoshi's, say I input like, this is pretty cool because it has like a partial refresh thing. And then it also has a like on the fly um, uh, conversion from Satoshi to your local currency, which is also pretty cool. And then we press the, the hashtag. It says processing. And then it should give us a QR. There we are, it gives us a QR. And that is, a, I mean, it's not, it's not the prettiest of devices, but it's a very, very, very cheap little device to make. And it's good fun as well. Um, uh, and as I said, it's kind of these devices, you know, join together and, and then just with a, a little um, adhesive uh, keypad. Uh, these keypads are incredibly cheap. They're about like 50p each or something. Um, there's not much to them to be honest. It's just a, an adhesive um, uh, keypad. It's got like a, if I kind of peel it on the back so you can see, it's got a, a very simple um, matrix uh, for, the, for the keys. Um, so obviously to get it to fit onto, uh, onto my little box, um, I cut off the uh, A, B, C, D keys because they were very important to me, um, which you can do on this because of the way the matrix is laid out. As long as you're careful, you can just cut away those keys and it still works, which is pretty cool. Um, or you can just leave them on and use a bigger box. Um, but I wanted, I wanted a nice small box, I thought it looked cool. Um, on the box, the box itself, uh, I bought that from, I mean, this, this device as well, uh, um, I slapped, because I, I left my original one uh, in the Chaos Communication Congress when I went there and then uh, I had to make one up quickly to show someone for a demonstration and I made this up in like half an hour. Um, so that's why it's just a bit naff, the, the, cutting out of the, uh, the cutting out of the keypad. The other one had, had taken a little bit more time with it. Um, but the, these boxes, this is just a little project box. Um, I could actually show you uh, on Amazon now. Um, so, uh, yeah, the little project boxes, they're, they're incredibly cheap, you know, they, they can get five here for like £8. Uh, so if you haven't got a 3D printer, 
Um, and if you, you can't bother sort of going to the outer to making your own box, you, you can find decent, a, a, a wide variety of different size project boxes, which, which will um, suit most, most projects. Um, uh, the, the um, if we go, let me go back to the, so I'm sharing the video. Um, the other hardware which I'm using is, of course, the MHET Live uh, e-paper display. It's about $10, $11 on AliExpress. Um, the ESP32. Um, and I've also got a little super duper cheap LiPo battery in there powering it as well. Um, uh, and you can see there it's gone to sleep. So just, if you haven't seen the other tutorials I've done, if you haven't seen the tutorial for the price checker, or the tutorial for the sweep machine, uh, it's probably worth watching those before you move on to the, the point of sale device. Um, especially the, the price check. If you if you have this, if you bought this hardware to make this little point of sale device, then first make the price checker because um, it's a good place to start. Um, and then, then move on to the actual uh, point of sale device here. So yeah, I mean the, the ESP32 there, as I've said in the other videos, are like $5 and then that's like a dollar, maybe 50, you know, 50 cents or whatever. Um, so this whole thing is, and those boxes are incredibly cheap. We've got a little cheap button on the side. Um, and of course we've got some jumper wires in there as well. I'd say this whole thing costs like under $20, which is pretty good. Um, uh, and it's not particularly hard to make. Um, you can just cut and paste my code um, and then upload it onto the ESP32. Uh, but I'm gonna show you kind of how to, well, I'm gonna convert this uh, price check, I'm going to convert this into, into one of these so I can show you how I've done it. Um, I just won't put it in the box. Um, maybe I'll open this one up so I can kind of show you what it looks like inside. So yeah, so uh, that's going to be the, the project for today. We're going to uh, look at making a cheap, simple point of sale device, low powered, uh, has the, the deep sleep function so it'll, it'll sleep for, you know, for months um, if it's not in use. Uh, um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna sort of dig dig right in, I suppose, as as we usually do. Um, let me switch cameras here. Okay, so um, this is kind of uh, the um, point of sale device we're making today. Is kind of a fork of this one. So this is the original one, and originally it just worked in Satoshi's because I was being um, a sort of you know true true Bitcoin. Um, uh, uh, devoutly Bitcoin enthusiast um, by not using fiat. But then I realized it's actually a bit annoying. Like if you're paying for something, you're trying to work out how much it costs in Satoshi's, you end up just trying to do it in your head or doing it on a phone or, or Googling it or something anyway. So it seems silly. Um, so I put in the, the conversion in there as well, which is, I, I think is pretty neat. Um, uh, on in the GitHub, it tells you how to kind of cut the uh, the adhesive uh, matrix down if you want to, to to fit onto a smaller box. It also gives you the wiring instructions. Um, the original one as well actually had an LED, uh, which gave you a little bit of feedback, which was quite nice. Uh, it just lit up after after someone had paid um, uh, paid the invoice. So that was actually that was actually pretty nice. I quite like that. Um, but the, the new one hasn't got that. I'm not, not sure why. Oh, okay, I changed it so it just says pending uh, on the screen. Uh, but I'm, I'm sort of ignoring about putting that little LED back there. But you can see I made a bit of a better job there because they're cutting it all out and making it look neat. Um, so uh, if you go to the uh, Arc BTC um, uh, GitHub and you go to Flux Capacitor, then there's an uh, on version, so that's an open node version. Um, so in the previous tutorial uh, for the Sweet Machine, um, I uh, showed you how to set up an open node um, uh, account, so I'm not gonna do that again. Um, and it, it uh, I showed you how to, to get an API key, so you could use an API key in your project. Um, so if you haven't seen that tutorial, and you're not sure how to do that, then go watch that tutorial, go set up your account, and then, then come back and, and pick this tutorial up from here. Um, uh, and there's there's a link, in fact, so you can click to, to get through to open node there. Um, there's, this is pretty much, yeah, it's the same data. I just kind of changed the, the top part here because this is kind of the, the an open node edition. Um, and this is also a little bit more updated as it's got the, um, it's got the, if I click back here, so you can see it again, it's got the, um, the automatic conversion. It's also got the sleep, the other one didn't have a sleep function. Um, I didn't say loading as well. I can't remember what it said when it first turned on. 
I think I had a little picture or something. Um, but yeah, this is this has got the automatic conversion thing, which I think is ace. Look at that, crazy. Um, and then obviously, when the moment you click the button, it says processing. So that's quite sweet too. The the older version didn't have that, and then it gives you gives you your QR code there. You can always just press the reset button if you want to get a new QR code, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to kind of just dive straight in, pretty much, I suppose. Um, I'm going to open up uh, the Arduino IDE uh, with a nice blank project here. We're going to do the same thing we did with the Sweet Machine tutorial. We're going to split up our API calls into a separate file just to make it look neat. Um, I will warn you, um, I've added to the, the, the code base quite substantially, so there's quite a lot of code here to get through. Um, so it's less making in this tutorial, it's more kind of just like showing you how the code works. And then, um, yeah, uh, so if I copy all that, um, I know there's a less goofy way of doing this, but you know, we're goofball, so there we are. Um, and if we save that as, what should we call it? Um, uh, new flux. Um, I kind of came up with the name the flux capacitor because it kind of looks a bit 80s. And then also like the, uh, the flux capacitor, obviously um, it makes time travel possible. And uh, as we all know, um, transactions over the Lightning Network is, is kind of almost like time travel. Um, it actually, my previous uh, one, I'm not sure whether it was the, the Eclair wallet I was using or whatever, but it, it seemed to register the payment before the payment had, had been registered on my wallet, on my phone wallet. Um, so it was almost like it was uh, registering before I'd actually sent the, um, the payment, which was quite fun. Okay text editor um, so I'm taking the uh, open node.h file and I'm just slamming it in a text editor and I'm going to save that in the same file as as the new flux I'm going to call it open every time open node Right, then we close that because I don't need that. And then that's already saved, isn't it? I'm going to close that. Um, and then when I open up the Arduino IDE again, because um, uh, because it can see OpenNode.h in the folder. Fuck, there he is. Because um, it can see openno.h in the folder, it will open up as a separate little tab there, so that's quite, it's quite neat and tidy. Um, we've added a function, and well, in fact, yes, yeah, so this is this is really like the the sweet machine and the price checker combined. Because the sweet machine didn't have a price checker because it didn't need it, um, um, and the price checker didn't have uh, the ability to to request an invoice because it didn't need it. But this this the has both. The point of sale has both. So in, in our, um, our API calls, we've got on price, that just goes and fetches the, um, the, the currency conversion um, from, from Bitcoin to whatever your currency is. You can set the currency actually um, in, uh, where is it? There's one of these things here. Okay, in this string here. So here it says BTC GBP for your USD, just change that to USD there, or EUR. -E -E um, and then our API call here um, just splits up that string and takes those um, uh, last three characters. Um, so whatever you put in the last three, last three characters will be fine. And then when it goes in and fetches the, um, the request uh, from open node um, for, the, for, for all the different conversion rates, it will just go find your, your currency and, and open node Pretty much case for all currencies, so that's not really an issue. 
Um, this is the same uh, function as we used in the sweep machine. It just goes and fetches uh, a pay a, a, a charge, um, so an invoice from Open Node. Uh, it's probably best actually if I start. Yeah, if I start here, and I'm just gonna. Although you should have done the sweep machine tutorial, I'm just gonna assume you haven't done the sweep machine tutorial. I'm just gonna go through the whole code. Okay, so we've got uh, uh, a couple of libraries which we're calling here. Um, we've got a Wi-Fi library so we can connect the device to the, our local Wi-Fi. We've got Wi-Fi client secure. That's um, the library we're going to use to make the HTTPS uh, call. We've got Arduino JSON library, the excellent Arduino JSON library, may I add. It's very good. Um, the data we get back from the OpenNode API is a JSON. Uh, so um, this will uh, pass through that JSON data for us and, and, and give us that data in a nice, easy, um, manageable way. These GXCPD2 um, libraries here, there for the actual e-paper itself. Um, QR code .h, that's um, to generate a QR code. Um, the string uh, library here, we well, I just showed you that. We use that to kind of split that string up to take the um, the final three characters from the, the currency and, and use it to get our currency. We've got a an, another, a new uh, library in uh, which we haven't used before, which is Keypad, um, and this is a library for uh, uh, Keypad matrices. So yeah, well, Arduino is pretty good. It's got a library for everything. Um, we're including three fonts. I don't think we're using three fonts, but they're, they're there anyway. So you know, there we are. Um, this uh, uh, here um, tells the GXEPD library that we're using a 1.54 inch e-paper display and um, the pins which uh, um, uh, we've connected to the display, um, the SBI pins. Um, I'm not going to go through that process. You go if you've got the the, the hardware to, to make this project, go and do the uh, price checker tutorial because you'll you'll learn all about that. Um, your Wi-Fi details, um, you'll need to enter those in there. And then that's just obviously the open node URL, the port, which is 443, which is the standard HTTPS port. Um, you stick in your open node API there. Um, um, and then you can put in a, a little description uh, on the point of sale device, all the, um, all the charges have the same description. So you could just make this a unique description for that device. So you can kind of locate, um, if you had multiple devices in a, I don't know, a busy bar or something, you'd know what charges came from what device. Um, hints false, so, uh, as I said in the last tutorial, open a really cool, uh, they added hints to their uh, invoices to make it easier for uh, routes to be made through the network. Um, but that made the invoices a little bit bigger, um, which meant that they wouldn't fit on my tiny little e-paper displays. Um, so they've, I, I called them and I emailed them and very kindly within a few hours, they'd added a perimeter to their API, um, which can, so we're saying we don't want the hints in our, in our invoices, so we end up with nice small invoices. Um, this is where you select what currency you're gonna use, we've already covered that. Uh, the price here, this is the, um, uh, the, the, the string which um, are, uh, on price spits out here is yeah, yeah. Um, spits out there which is the um, what does it spit out there why is it spitting out the data on currency all oh, right yeah it's spitting out the uh, the actual conversion rate um, so we can do the calculation um, this is it's just got a bunch of strings which we're declaring this one here is going to be an empty string which is is gonna we're gonna stick our invoice in when we go and fetch it. Um, this is a, a string, so this is when we check to see whether the invoice has been paid, um, and it's just you know as default unpaid. But when it is paid, then the, the device knows to refresh and, and wait for a new a new uh, request. Um, we've got uh, data ID, so this is so once we've made um, a, a charge on the POS device. Um, we record the ID of that of that invoice, so we can then keep checking that invoice to make sure it's been paid. Which just means that you could have multiple devices connecting to your uh, Open Node API. Um, you've got a couple of counters and stuff. That's us calling in the Open Node uh, .h library, which is there. Uh, not library. 
file which is there um, as I said in the sweet machine tutorial it's very complicated to actually make the QR code on the fly and display it on the paper it isn't easy um, so the QR code layout library here you can feed it data and get it to make a QR code and you can get it to spit that QR code in ones and zeros but you can't get it to make a, like a bitmap or a PNG or a, well, a bitmap is what the ePaper will specifically show and a very specific type of bitmap so basically we take those ones and zeros and we use this dictionary here this character array dictionary uh, and it just compares these groups of ones and zeros and then from that we can build these sort of um, hex values which we need to be able to build the uh, the bitmap image um, so yeah that, that was a real pain in the ass to do uh, uh, a lot of people helped me on that one uh, so this this relates to the the keypad library here where we're um, we're saying this is our, obviously our keypad um, and we're saying which pins on the ESP32 are connected to which um, uh, to which which keys on the keypad. Um, I'm quite tempted now to switch cameras while we're thinking about that. Yeah, let's do that. It'd be fun. Uh, so I move our sweet machine out of the way. I move our point of sale device out of the way. I'm going to take my keypad here, I'm not going to cut it off, I think it will just probably work, I'm gonna, I will unplug this battery though. Um, now, if I get that GitHub up, it's probably a good place to start isn't it, because I don't know where they're supposed to plug it in. Okay, blah, 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 blah. so it goes from GPI 012 to 35 12 to 35 now we've left these keys on here haven't we so 12 to 35 let's see but i suppose as long as it ends at 35 it should just work i guess where's 35 or oh, 35 there all right you know as long as it so as long as it ends at 12 on pin 12 um Sorry, I didn't switch back to the camera today. Okay, so as long as, oops, I want that focus. Man, this little webcam thing's so slow at focusing, it's annoying, oh, there we are. Yeah, so pin 12's like there. I think as long as it starts on pin 12, if it goes over to th over 35, it doesn't really matter. It's just a bit dark in here. Right, okay. So, I really like these, these little keypad things as well because they've just got one big connector and just connect it in, it's so easy. I've used other keypads for other projects which are so much more fiddly. Um, so there we are, that's pretty cool. So now we have the keypad and we've got the e-paper um, and the SP32. So all we need to do actually, actually there, I think is just, oh, we need to add the button. We'll add the button as well at some point. Um, uh, yeah, so there we are. So we plugged that in. Uh, so we'll carry on just zipping through our code. Um, okay. So what have we got here? Um, yeah, right. So we, we begin our setup um, function. First thing we do is turn on the e ink display and then we display um, loading. Uh, as I said in the other videos, this is just the kind of this um, the do and the while loop here, just the the format the ePaper expects from um, in the library, the GXEPD library. Um, I sh I'm sure you can probably do that neater, and if you can, then put a comment in the GitHub. That'd be great. Um, then we uh, turn the serial um, our serial on, so we can uh, send data out through our USB. That just means that we can use the serial monitor. Um, that's debug um, so yeah uh, we've got a Wi-Fi here so the Wi-Fi connects um, there's some feedback it says connecting on the serial monitor and then once it's connected it says connected obviously you don't have the serial monitor if it's not plugged into the laptop but it's just useful when we're debugging um, and then the next thing is it does is it uh, it runs the um, that uh, on price function which I told you about which goes and fetches the um, the conversion rate for our selected currency 
So it goes and fetches that and then it stores the conversion rate in that price thing there. Actually prints out into our serial monitor as well so we can see it's done it. Um, uh, so then that's just stored in, stored in that string. Um, so we begin our main loop has a counter set as zero and hex values are cleared. So I think that's just in case they're still full from the last time round from when this function loops. Um, so we're saying while well, max dig equals zero, uh, run this stuff here. So the first thing we're doing is we're running a function called keypad amount. So let's go have a look at keypad amount, see what that does. It's right down the bottom. No, it's not. It's almost down the bottom. It's a big one. Right, so this is the function for the keypad amount. Um, so the first thing it does uh, is it displays, um, as we saw, it displays, uh, um, it sets the rotation because obviously we've, we've turned the e-paper round onto its side. Um, it, it fills the screen with white to, to clear anything which is, is there. It selects a font. It then says to, to tells the text color to be black and puts the cursor 20 pixels down and 20 pixels across. And then it writes the um, um, this, you know, amount then hashtag. And then there's a space, uh, uh, a line break and it says sats. Um, it's confusing. Oh, right, oh, I see what I've done. <laughs> yeah, so it says sats. Um, and then there's another line break. And then this is that substring thing. So it's getting, um, uh, for me, it's GBP. Um, and then, so when this is printed out, it will kind of look like sats there, except it'll be GBP colon. Um, so this is GBP and then plus, plus the little colon and space bit on the end. And then it um, uh, selects a slightly smaller font and it says press star to clear. So if, if you want to clear the amount you've put in, you can press star. Then um, it has a, uh, a checker. So we saw checker at the top, didn't we? I think I think it was set to zero. Was that counter? I can't remember. Um, we have checker here, uh, and it's saying while checker is under twenty, um, uh, then basically like get the keypad. Um, so it's saying while this is under twenty, just run this loop. Where's this loop end? There it is, ends over there. Okay, so all that. So run all this stuff here. Um, the first thing it does is it, it checks to see whether someone has pressed a button on the keypad. If it has, it stores that button in their key. So it's most likely a number, isn't it? If um, It's saying here, if no key is selected, then run all this stuff. Um, uh, if key equals no key, run all this stuff. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I see. I see. So it just, yeah. Um, uh, and then it's, uh, then we've got, so the key is the character. Say we put in five. Um, uh, oh, I'm an idiot. If, duh, if, cause that's, um, is not. So if no key, uh, if it's, if it's not no key, so I, someone's pressed the key, then run this thing here. That makes more sense. Um, so we take that string key and we put it in a string vert key. I don't know why we do that. We say if vert key is equal to star, then clear the memory, basically. Set the checker to 20, um, which means uh, it will, it will, it will, it will. If you set the checker to 20, it's then going to break out of this while loop, isn't it? Oh, right, okay, then it gets the checker set to zero, which is pretty weird. Uh, oh, I see. So it breaks out the while loop and then, uh -huh, and then it just runs this, this again. So as far as you're away, you just clear, clear the, um, clear the numbers. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, and then it's, uh, what we've got now. So, so if virtue key, that should be an else if really, but it seems to be working. So leave as it is, it's hashtag, um, then say processing. All right. So that's, so the, the hashtag thing there is once they finished inputting the amount and they press hashtag and then it'll say processing. Um, and then it'll go and display the, the QR code. 
uh, processing. Uh, that, so yeah, it, it also sets the checker to equals 20. Um, oh, which I suppose then means that, it's funny when you just don't understand what your own code is doing, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, this thing, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I get you. Which means this thing will loop around again. I get you, okay. Amount, uh, max dig, string equals amount. Okay, I get you. Um, uh, else, oh, okay, so if it's just a number which has been typed, uh, so if it's not star and it's not hashtag, then um, add one onto checker. So basically, I don't think we can add more than 20, 20 numbers into our point cell device, which is fair, I think. Um, then we run this partial uh, update uh, function. So the partial update function is just a way for us to um, change the uh, numbers without having to refresh the whole screen. Um, and that's just down here, this, the partial update function. So it just takes, uh, so yeah, so we've said so max dig, that's the, the number. So say we put in like 55 Satoshis, yeah? Um, so far, uh, then 55 Satoshis, uh, or this, now we're putting you a six in, so it's 556. So now 556 is gonna get sent to um, uh, show partial update. And it's going to get, it's going to run through uh, our function. Uh, so um, it has, it turns that string into a float, which we call sats. So floats is like an integer, like a number with a, a decimal place. Um, and it also does the same with the, the conversion rate we got back. And we call that fiat. And then we've got a, a, a float called fiat scum which is the Satoshis divided into 100 million times the fiat, so times the um, conversion amount. And that gives us um, uh, our, our fiat scum amount. So that's like how, how much the fiat, the, the Satoshis which we've inputted are worth. It's quite funny. Um, and then we, what do we do here? We, oh yeah, this, I remember this, this, this was really quite annoying. Um, so we're actually making two little windows on the display. Um, uh, one is showing Satoshi, Satoshi string, which is the, the amount of Satoshis. And then the next little window, which is directly beneath it, is showing the fiat scum. Um, and that's the converted uh, GBP, USD, whatever fiat amount. Um, this seemed to be the only way I could get it to work. I couldn't put it in one big window and just have that on a new line. It had to be two separate little windows. But that's, that's, that means we can have like a partial update. Again, it's probably worth me just quickly switching to the device so you can kind of see what I'm getting at. So when I type in my amounts here, it doesn't have to update the whole screen. It's just updating a tiny little window there for those 33 Satoshis. And then the other uh, one is just on the fly um, updating the tiny little window underneath it. Yeah. Um, and it just means, uh, it just means that um, we don't have to, so if, say if I press the, the reset now, you'll see obviously, if I didn't do that, it would have to refresh the whole screen like you just saw then, and it'd be, be ugly. So um, we don't want that. Um, yeah. So that's, that's that bit there. Uh, um, we seem to have reached the end of the, oh, we haven't reached the end of the page at all, silly me. Um, so once someone pressures, presses the, the hashtag, um, that max dig amount gets put in this string called amount. Um, so that's the Satoshis we inputted. So we input like, you know, 33, oh, 556 Satoshis. That runs the fetch payment function. So that's in this open node file here, because this is one of our API calls. Um, so this is the amount here, is this string here, sats amount. Um, we use our Wi-Fi client secure to make a, a secure connection to our, um, uh, the open node API. Um, and then we have, we're doing a post request. Um, so we're connecting to the API and we're posting some data and then it's gonna send us back 
um, an invoice um, and uh, some some more data. Uh, all this stuff is when you make when you use your web browser is included. Uh, so when you hit a web page or you know you you send a form on a web page. Um, or you just do a get request on a web page. All this kind of stuff is included in it, but obviously you don't see it because it's the, the code in the background. But we, we have to include this stuff raw because we don't have like a browser built into ISP32 because it'd be ginormous. So we have a really basic browser, so we have to do everything in the sort of command line. Um, so this is what we're going to post. So we're posting. We want. We don't want any hints in our uh, in our invoice. Um, our description is flux, I think, um, which is what we wrote in the uh, in the header up here in this file. Um, the SATS amount is five hundred and fifty-six. That was carried through. Um, okay. These are some headers which are um, sent over to our uh, to the. OpenNode API, such as the API key, which we wouldn't authenticate um, give us access if we didn't include. Um, and then it returns uh, uh, a JSON um, uh, data, uh, which we then clean up a little bit, and then we send it to our Arduino JSON uh, um, library. Um, so we send it to a buffer, um, and then it finds that the root data um, which is the, the sort of main root of the, the JSON uh, file. And then we look for ID um, and we lock the data up there as data ID. So that, that is literally the, um, uh, the ID of the invoice we've just made. Okay. Um, and it's going to stick it in this data ID thing here so we can look that invoice up later. Um, and then the next thing it's going to do is it goes to Lightning Invoice and it goes to the pay request. So it, it goes and gets the the actual invoice, the lightning invoice, and it sticks it in there. It fills that up for us so we can use that. Okay, um, so there we are. So now it's, that's our, remember that's our, our, our invoice is just literally gone fetched. Um, and we're gonna stick that inside the QR maker function. So the QR maker function, which is here, here we go. Um, it takes that string, which we've just sent to it, which was the invoice, the lightning invoice, and it makes a, um, a QR code um, uh, out of zeros and ones, okay? And then, um, as I said before, once it's made, where are we? Once it's made that QR code out of zeros and ones, um, and it stores it in uh, uh, something called line, a, uh, a string called line. Um, this bit of code here then passes through, and this is with our little library bit, the bit I showed you before. So it's passing through and it's just checking to build those hex values to be able to make the, um, the BMP. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it builds that BMP up, it builds a big fat BMP, and then once it's built a big fat BMP up, which is called single hex, um, it's a really bad name, I don't know why it's called that. We then send that data to our display. Uh, so this is just like the sweet machine. Um, uh, we have to make, for some reason I had to make like, uh, uh, if I didn't do this bit here, if I didn't make like a big window, because um, I made those two little windows for my uh, Satoshis and the fear um, conversion um, when, was, when we were inputting the amount, um, the QR code just seems to appear in one of those little boxes, so I had to do this to kind of like clear it and open up the whole ePlay appear display again. Um, again, I think it's a bit of a hacky way of doing it, but you know, if someone's got a better way of doing it, please do say. Um, so yeah, it's a QR code and it's 184 by 183 pixels, it's in black. And then once it's displayed the QR, it does just the the, the check payment um, and this bit is, is exactly the same as the uh, as the sweet machine. It's just checking the payment. So this check payment function here is here. I won't spend too long on it. It's just a simple get request, um, and it's just literally saying, you know, has this been paid? Has this payment ID been paid? And then it passes through the JSON data it gets back, and it just gets what the, the, the data status. So is that's either paid or unpaid. Remember, I think we set that at the very top here. 
so it's default unpaid but then hopefully um, that will get changed to paid now I'm lost sorry um, oh yeah um, now it uh, so it does that um, it gives you I think it gives you 30 seconds to pay and then if you don't pay it just goes to sleep um, uh, so first it displays sleeping press button to wake and then immediately after displaying that it then just goes to sleep and uses the, the 0 0.04 milliamps per hour which means we can have super duper long battery life and then you break that sleep cycle by pressing the, the little reset button. Um, so that is it we've managed to cover all of the code which is fantastic. Um, so now it's just a case of I guess uploading the code and seeing if it works. Um, I'm going to have to blur you out for a second. Okay, so uploading. Okay, now I have to press the little beep button on the SP32. If I'm quick, if I really am. Okay. Nice, loading, good. And then my serial monitor I can see is saying connecting and this connected, so it's just connected to the Wi Fi. There we are. Amount and then hashtag. So if I press some of these numbers on here, so I'm sure we should go for 89. That's cool. If we press hashtag processing, boom. Look at that. That's good. I like that. Um, so I'm not actually going to solder this button in place. I'm just going to just going to kind of like loosely wire it in. This is just for prototyping purposes. It's my excuse. Um, so if you watch this um, machine tutorial, you'll remember that on the ESP32, um, there's a little EM button here, which is kind of a reset button. Um, but there's also an EM pin, and that does the exact same thing. It just needs to touch um, the ground, uh, one of the ground pins. So you've got a ground pin there, you've got a ground pin there. And then as soon as it touches one of those ground pins, so if I touch it now, so if I touch the ground pin, you'll see, there we are. The whole ESP32 just restarts um, and runs everything all, all over again. So if we stick... Um, uh, I just have to hold it in place. If we um, solder uh, a wire, just have a little push switch and solder that, then let me see if you can see this. When we hit the when we hit the push switch. There we are. Then the SP32 will reset, um, and we can use that to I don't know wake wake the the point of sale system up uh, for a new customer. There we are um, completed. Our point of sale device is done. Obviously, we haven't um, put it in a box, um, but that's you know that's up to you. Maybe you'd find a box with a uh, which is large enough to facilitate this whole adhesive keypad. That might look a bit nicer. Um, but you know, under twenty dollars, you can set some up with a, a point of sale system where they're using Lightning Network um, and give them a hardware wallet. It's a really nice way to kind of onboard um, uh, businesses and people who just want to ex accept Bitcoin um, and then give them that experience with these super fast payments because it's um, that's you know for a lot of people that's when they go whoa normal people no coiners 
um, when they go well, you know, and they, they, they appreciate um, uh, um, uh, uh, its, its value proposition. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully you'll join me again for another tutorial um, and uh, um, enjoy hacking and uh, cheers.